Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth instalment of Sniper Sundays. I hope you're all well and everybody's had a good weekend. And yeah, we're at the fourth instalment already. I can't actually believe time has flown so quick and we're already on the fourth episode. And I think today we need to basically review a lot of last week because what a week it was. Now, I originally spoke on one of my first videos about how it's achievable to get 500 to 1,000 pips in a week. And I think any of you who follow me on Instagram who have now seen, obviously, the last two, three weeks, no, not just the last two, three weeks, but previously, um, for months and months, I've been showing that this is possible. But particularly last week, um, especially where I made so many calls or basically gave my bias and directions in the market last uh, on, last, on the last Sniper Sundays on episode three, and they basically all played out as explained this week. Um, and yeah, we basically broke that thousand pip barrier and um, and managed to achieve over a thousand pips. Now it was a great week. Um, there was a, a it was a very very busy Friday, um, as many of you following me on Instagram will be aware. I had many posts up um, of various different trades, and what a great day it was. So I'm going to actually go over um, a lot of it on the on the charts. But um, as usual, I will go over the fundamentals coming up this week and explain through those and then go through the charts again. But what you've got in front of me here is the, the DXY, which is the US dollar currency index, which I brought to your attention last week. And uh, anyone that was trading this week would have seen exactly why. That this um, dollar index was very, very, very important in the past trading week. Now... Obviously, I brought it to your attention because of that. Um, I made you aware that this was going to be a big mover in the market. Not a big mover, but um, help you make your decision in the market. And basically, what I have here, and just first, I just want to, before I delve into this too much, anyone who hasn't actually watched Volume 3, I would highly recommend you do and um, just check how the market played out this week. And then it will give you a better understanding of a lot of the things I'm going to run over now. Now, as I said, the dollar index in front of me, what I had last week was I drew out this sort of highlighted region here and um, that you can see in front of you. Um, price was actually around this level here, um, this little cluster of price action. And I think many people were expecting this to pull back. But being so close to the top of this range, I could see that we had legs. And we had momentum to the, to the upside to be able to push up and actually retest this sort of um, the top of this range and the top of this resistance, which we have here, anywhere along this level. Now, um, I, was, I was expecting that or wary that that was possible. And therefore, as I explained, with the strength in the US dollar, if we can move up from here up to here, we see some strength in the US dollar. And then what I was really sort of looking out for was that if we were able to break through that resistance, we could see a big push up with the US dollar. See the, see the US dollar gain a lot of strength, and uh, which would then make, make a massive impact on other pairs. So for instance, if you remember, I showed that on Euro US dollar, should we be able to break out of that range, we would see Euro US dollar break lower and break the lows that I've marked out here of 1.1175. Now, if you look on Euro US dollar on the weekly chart, we haven't been at this sort of level since back in June 2017. So that level was a very big level to be able to break. Um, and then, it, as, as I explained, in order to do that, we needed a big push from the Euro from the US dollar to break out of that range. That also we haven't been above since November 2018 in order to be able to break that euro us dollar level so we actually managed to do that we came up we retested the resistance and then we actually broke through so big us dollar strength last week and that as i said that took effect on a lot of pairs and helped a lot of my um, analysis play out and gain me that 1000 or over the thousand pip week so i'm going to start a euro us dollar i just moved some of these out of the way and just explain now there is a lot. Of, there's about eight or nine to ten pairs I'm going to go over today, so there's quite a few things I'm going to go through. Um, starting with Euro US dollar. Um, well, here we can see on the weekly chart, big bearish week last week, big momentum down to the downside. Now on the daily, 
If you remember in last week's video, we, I spoke about this Fibonacci movement. So we had this uh, push back up. Um, I thought we might try and push up higher, but we had that sell off from around this level, the 50% Fibonacci retracement level. As you can see here on the daily chart, we had one, two, three, four rejections, shooting star, bearish engulfing, broke, and um, yeah, and then I was looking out for more downside momentum to come into the market last week. So where we were at was we were broken this trend line. If I just drop down to the four hour, I explained that I would be, I'll just get rid of this Fibonacci for a minute to make it a bit more clearer. Um, I explained that if we could break this level here, that if we could break this, that's a, let's adjust this, sorry. If we could, if we could break this support level, that I would be looking for more sales on this pair. I think I actually drew, um, brought up the tool here and I had something a similar setup like this that I explained that if you could break through this support level, come back up, have a retest, then I'd be looking at taking a short trade from there to come down to, firstly, this level. And if we could break this level, which we hadn't been lower for since, as I mentioned, back in 2018, or to sort of that region, that I would be looking at coming down to 111.75. Now, if I just take off this risk reward, we well, can see here, reason for that figure, that um, target that I gave was the extension that we can see here on the Fibonacci move. So we can see we had this retracement up to the 50% retracement. We came down, sorry, the figure I actually gave was 1.1120. Uh, and you can see we came down there all the way and tested just below that at 1.1111. So it became about eight pips below my target. I basically followed through since that break of this support here, came back for the retest, nice short trade, and we dropped from here all the way down to uh, to that target that I gave out. Now we are at the lows, um, le uh, the levels we haven't seen since, as I mentioned, back in 2018. So this, this is new territory um, for the past year for Euro US dollar. So we have to look at where we can go from here. Now, having broken this major support, I was explaining on my story or an Instagram live that I done last week that breaking that massive level, which we haven't been able to break for a long, long time or come any lower than this level, I was looking at a possible move back up to the upside to retest that. Now, on Friday, we can see that we did do that um, from this level down here and we pushed back up tried to retest it, didn't quite make it exactly, but we come back up to retest that, and now we've had another big sell-off, a big four-hour bearish engulfing. So at the moment, it looks like there could be more um, a more momentum down to the downside, and we, we could decline even further. On the daily chart, um, it's a bit of a doji candle, um, showing just a little bit of indecision on Friday, but the weekly chart, we can see here that uh, it's a big bearish week, and it does look like the momentum is to the downside. Now the next massive key level is 1.1000, as you can see here, um, which is a little a little bit away at the moment, but it is achievable. So at the moment, I'm actually going to just wait on Monday and Tuesday to and keep an eye on this pair. Um, maybe wait for the daily candle or the four hour. If we have another daily candle similar to this last one, another Doji candle. We might show that we're just slowing down and we can't get the momentum to keep pushing, and we might come back up for another pull up. Uh, maybe another retracement. Now that we've fulfilled this Fibonacci move, that you can see here, um, one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D, we may now just come back up to have form another retracement. So we could come all the way back up to sort of these areas before going any lower. So at the moment, we've fulfilled our target. We can see that um, people have taken some profit around these areas and price uh, the bulls have actually tried to make an attempt to push back up. But I have failed, so I'm not going to rush into this one on Monday or Tuesday. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, I do think we might come up and retest this sort of support level once again. Um, and if we can break above that, then we need to be careful um, as this could make a pull up higher to further retracement levels. Um, yeah, it might, it might just make a try and make another move higher. But um, while we are trading sort of below this trend line on the four hour, we could come all the way back up to sort of retest this. 
But while we're trading below that, short term, still we are still bearish. And until we get a break above this trend line, we're still bearish. Um, and if we break above this, then there may be a medium term upside movement. But um, while we're below this four hour, four hour trend line, then I am still um, bearish on this pair. So we might see a move up to here and move up to this sort of resistance that we've seen and then another move lower. But if we can break up, then we might see a nice move higher to various um, Fibonacci retracement levels like this, like I mentioned. So a few different scenarios on the cards for Euro USD. Um, big move down to the downside last week. So um, people may have taken profit from these sort of levels, especially as we're in new territory for Euro USD since, uh, as I said, back in 2017. So um, keep an eye on, I'm keeping an eye on this pair and just watching it over Monday and Tuesday before I sort of make any um, judgment on it and want to just see a bit more price action before I can make a decision. Um, but yeah, that was a nice trade last week and that was like over 100 pips or so on Euro USD following last week's analysis. Then we had USD CAD. Now this was a great trade for me last week. Um, I explained that I was looking for this pair I just remove some of these levels. I explained that I was looking for this pair to move higher. We were coming up to retest this resistance, uh, this trend line resistance coming across the screen here. We had 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and we were struggling to break through. But given I did give my bias on a short on oil um, the last couple of weeks, I was watching out for oil to actually just make a bit of a pullback as it was all at all time highs, and that explained that there was some confluence with the uh, USD CAD and oil. Um, and for various other reasons, I, ex I, was explain I was expecting USD CAD to try and break through this. We were ranging for a little bit here. You can see this on the daily chart. You can just see here, we we're ranging and consolidating and something big was gonna happen. We we're gonna have a big move. So you can see here, this is on the daily chart. So for nearly a couple of weeks here, let's go to the weekly chart. You can see here on the weekly chart, we've got one, two, three, four. So over a month, we were just ranging within that sort of daily range there and I was waiting for something big to happen. You can see the spikes to the downside, spikes to the upside, price trying to break out of this range, not able to. Had one last push to the downside, failed to break out lower and then we came back up and we had that big push through on the daily and uh, we came up to hit my th all three targets that I explained last week. So I'll get rid of this highlighted zone and just show on the four hour what we had here was basically a push away from resistance. Looked like we were going to head further down, but it was just sort of pulling in sellers into the market before we made a move up higher. Now, I showed people on my Instagram that I had an entry here from the very bottom here. Nice tight stop, because if we went any lower than this level, then um, I would have been looking price to come any lower. Um, so a nice tight stop around, around this level here. And then, yeah, I had a few targets on my, um, that, that I gave out. So the first one was the top of this range, which I had highlighted a second ago. My second target was this level here, the second point uh, where the trend line had hit. And then my third target was the overall 1.3500 up here, which was my overall uh, monthly, re uh, weekly resistance level, which we actually came up and hit. Now, anyone that was in this pair last week would know that we had this nice breakout, uh, push up to the upside. We hit this resistance and we pushed through. And then we had some Canadian news come out during the week. And what we could see here, I'll actually get rid of this for a minute just to make it a bit more clearer. What happens a lot of the time around the time of news events, as you can see here, this cluster of price on the four hour chart, one, two, three, four candles. We were at resistance, which is why price slowed down. But then the news was coming, and this was obviously trying to bring people into the market as well. Any people eager trying to sell um, against uh, sell, sell against the CAD here just before the news would have got caught out. Because this was sort of making a sign that we were rejecting the resistance here. But there was no real confirmation yet. And then the, the news came out for the Canadian dollar, and we pushed us up even higher. So we actually achieved from the low here, through um, resistance, through to the second point of the trend line, and through to the weekly, um, my weekly resistance level of 1.3500, and we achieved 200 pips on that. So I posted this trade from the beginning down here, um, which was actually on the bank holiday Monday in the UK, 
and then we pushed up and achieved the 200 pips up here. Now, um, I've taken most of my profit um, at, at this level here, 70% of my profit is taken off, and I am letting uh, a percentage of my um, trade keep running to see if we can push up higher and actually come all the way up to the start of this trend back up at 1.3650. Now, we are looking quite bearish off that monthly, of that weekly resistance of 1.3500. You can see here that we've had a daily sort of evening star here, one, two, three candles off resistance, 1.3500. We've had that evening star, so it does look like we're going to pull back um, a bit lower. So what you can see here is we are actually coming back towards that second point of, um, of the trend line, which was my second target. We're coming back towards that to sort of retest that as support because since we've broken through that support, we haven't retested it. So we're coming back through there and I will be watching at how price acts around this level. Now we are in an uptrend at the moment and we've got this trend line on here. So I will be watching, I will be holding my long trade until we see a break off this trend line. So I'll be expecting the price to come back down to this support level, might consolidate a little bit, um, but we might be able to push off this trend line and use that as a catalyst to push up even higher. But should we break that, then I will be looking at short trades coming back down. But um, yeah, unless we break this trend line here, unless we break below, then I am still um, holding my long bias on this pair. Um, I also explained with USD CAD how it has an inverse correlation with uh, the Aussie dollar, which is what's in front of us right now. And let me just clean up this a little bit. I explained last week my bias was short on Aussie. Uh, on AUD USD, obviously because my bias was long on USD CAD, if they have inverse correlation, one they do opposites of each other. Now we had 200 pips on USD CAD, and then Aussie dollar. Uh, we can see on the daily here we had, if I just zoom out, we had the third touch of this trend line, of this descending trend line. We had the third touch of that on the daily. We can see Doji candles spikes to the upside. And then we had this bearish engulfing candle here, which was, I think we looked at this on Sniper Sundays in volume three. And yeah, we did actually see this. So this was the reversal sign here, a bearish engulfing covering the previous doji candle here. And on the four hour chart, I had this counter trend line drawn on here. So I think we had just broken this last week. And the setup I gave out was to if we could break this level here we could break this last lower high this support level here so if we broke below this and retested then short trades were valid so we can see here we had this we had a little pop-up on monday i think it was and we had the breakthrough i'll drop down to the one hour chart we can see here that we broke through and we came back up for the retest and then we pushed back down so once we had that break and retest of that support level the short trades were valid now from there I then gave various um, targets which were the support levels like these but the overall was to come down and test the monthly support of 0 0.7050 now we more than fulfilled that and we came down and actually broke through it and on a daily you can see here we came back down to retest these former lows around this level here. So we've actually now found some support. This is a nice 200 pip trade. Again, or more than that, but took 200 pips from this trade. And yeah, we can see we came back all the way back down to the lows of back in March, uh, two uh, March this year. And um, yeah, we're struggling to break through that at the moment. But at the moment, we can see on a daily chart, we're now stuck between. The lows of 2019, which is 0 0.700, um, that sort of region here, and 0 0.7750. Uh, so we've got in about a 50 pip range here that we'll have to watch out for next week. We can see we bounce on support, come up, retested resistance here now. So we've retested this support, which we broke through, retesting it as resistance. And so now we're stuck in between a rock and a hard place, you could say. We're going to have to see whether the price can break this support or break this resistance which would be quite a nice simple trade to look at for next week so what i'll be watching on this is whether we can break above this resistance we can break above and come back and ret retest a support then it could be looking at long trades to come back up and retest 
um, retest levels higher, uh, resistance levels. If we look at the lower side, if we can actually break lower of 0.700, then there isn't a lot supporting us below. So if we get a break below this level, come back, retest as resistance and get that rejection, then we could look at further short trades on this pair and we could come down a lot further. We can see here, there's not a lot of support below us here. We just go to the weekly chart. You can see that we have to look at coming all the way down to sort of these levels at 0.6900 to find any support. So we could be in a little bit of free fall. So um, before that happens, I think we might see a little bit of consolidation around this sort of zone that I mentioned. Let me just get this highlighted. I think we might see a little bit of consolidation around this zone before we see any big move. Um, we need to accumulate some liquidation, uh, some buyers and sellers into the market before we have another big move. We can see that's a big 200 pit or more so um, drop from these highs. So um, we need to just maybe create some, as I said, more buyers and sellers in the market within this consolidation zone before we have a bigger move. But from here, we might see a pullback to certain retracement levels before making a bigger move down. Um, we could go to the 38, 50 or the 61% retracement levels. But basically, to not get too complicated, I will be watching this pair around this level before making the next move. As I said, wait for the breakout and then get and then get the retest for confirmation, either a breakout above and then retest of support before before taking a trade or a break below support and a retest of that as resistance before taking a short. But we had a very good week on that last week. We had uh, made over 200 pips on this pair as well. Um, so now I'm standing aside and watching what it does next week. Now, um, moving on to oil. Oil was a big, big mover last week. Um, was a great was a great pair, um, a, a great commodity to trade. I've been speaking about this pair for quite a while, uh, this commodity, sorry, for quite a while um, now. I've been watching it for the past few weeks on Sniper Sundays. I've been explaining that I've been looking at um, trying to take a short on this on this commodity um, for different fundamental reasons, but as explained, um, I think it was last week. Um, I was looking looking at shorts around this area, and I showed on my Instagram uh, a short that I took on this pair. So at the moment, we've actually just hit a trend line, um, a very a major trend line. So going forward for next week, it's going to be important. But um, I was looking at different trend lines as we got in here. Is it this one here? To drop down to the four hour chart. Let's make this a little bit clearer. Sorry. Put this trend line on here, we'll stick to that point. Yeah. Um, so what I was looking at last week was this pair. Let's get rid of this one for the moment. So it just helps us. I was I told you that I was short from uh, this level here. So I had I had a short trade, we kept com kept coming back up to hit my um, to hit my stop loss at break even after we had a bit of a a sell-off. So we had a sell-off, came back up. Had one, two, three sort of rejections here, and then we had a nice big push down to the downside. Was it about 100 pips in profit or so? Came back up, retested it again, um, took me out of the market at break even. I sold again around this level, again pushed back down, and then we broke up higher. So I explained last week to actually keep an eye on this commodity if you are trading it. That should we break above this, we'd see a big move up to the upside. So we did move up higher, we broke above this level here. <laughs> And we had a big a big push up to the upside. Now from there, I kept an eye on this pair. As we can see, we had a big impulsive move. But then on the four hour chart, we can see this is a bit of a shooting star. We had lots of doji candles, another sort of spike to the upside. We didn't have anything really convincing. It looked like just by price action that we were sort of running out of legs here with the bull. Uh, the bulls are running out of legs. We didn't really have enough to keep us pushing, uh, keep pushing um, any higher. And a pullback was due to maybe retest this support level. But overall, I've been looking for a bigger pullback on the bigger picture with oil. Because, if we, as I've mentioned this in volume 2, I think, if we just look on the weekly chart on oil. This is the highest point that uh, the price of oil has been since, uh, since let's go back, since 2018. Um, it's the highest price of it be, uh, of this year. 
see the low down here is actually in December 2018. So the, since the beginning of this year, we've been just on an incline and a very fast incline on the price of oil, all the way back down, all the way from $42 a barrel, all the way up to now what we did reach was $66 a barrel. So around these levels here, I'll be keeping an eye on this commodity for a pullback. And I actually showed this Fibonacci level. Sorry. I showed this Fibonacci level a few weeks ago. I was looking at taking a short around this 61.8%. Um, also, when I was looking at taking a short around here, I did have in my mind that we needed to sort of retest these support levels here. So you can see here, or if I just get rid of that and make it a little bit clearer with a highlighting tool, you can see that price all along this sort of level was a big was a big support. So I was looking at price perhaps coming up to sort of these levels here and retesting that before we had the bigger move, uh, the big move down. Now, when I showed my trade on Instagram, you may have seen that I had lots of uh, lots of trades on this around the top area, which I'll explain why in a minute. But just on the weekly chart, you can see how good this looks now for a possible reversal. Um, we've had this massive shooting star on the weekly chart. The two previous weeks, not a lot of movement. We had this shooting star, then we had a doji candle, we made a big push up to the upside, and now we've had that big reversal, pulling back all the way from $66, um, $66.50 um, per barrel, all the way down to, uh, we hit lows of $62.50. Um, so big, big drop on oil this week. Now, going to, into the week ahead, um, I am looking for further downside, but we have just now hit a major trend line support, which you can see here. So I do expect a little bit of a pullback on this commodity before a bigger move down, if any. Now, um, this could made, be just a retracement before moving higher on, on this uh, commodity. I did gain 400 pips on this. Now, the reason for, if I drop down to the four hour, the reason for accumulating smaller trades on this, um, rather than putting one large trade on, I actually, because this pair can move very, very fast, and I knew that I was basically picking the top on this pair, I knew that there'd be a bit of manipulation, a lot of movement, and a lot of sort of trickery from the market. So rather than placing one massive trade, um, I decided to hedge my hedge my trades in, get lots of uh, smaller trades, which eventually amounted up to the same or more than my than what a one larger trade would be. And so I sort of, if I just give you a visual uh, representation, sort of just uh, got trades in like here, here, um, got one at, from the very top. Um, at around six, uh, 66, uh, 50 or 40. Um, and I got in various, various pair, uh, uh, trades like this. So then I think when I showed my trade, you can see I had lots of trades up here. Um, but now um, we have actually, I held all those trades as we actually fell the 400 pips and came down to that trend line. So um, that was a nice, obviously I had, I think eight trades placed around this level here. Um, but if we just collectively call that one trade, then yeah, that was another 400 pips create uh, profitable on that on this commodity last week as we came down. Now, actually, on my Instagram live on Thursday evening, anyone who was able to catch that, I actually had this trend line on here, and at this point, I was 100 pips in profit at this trend line point here. Now, I was watching this area because this could have this was sort of the breaking point for this. We can see we kept just moving higher every time we had a slight little pullback on oil, we moved higher. And this could have been the same here, a little bit of a pullback and just before we moved higher. So I explained on Thursday evening on the Instagram Live that if we broke this, we were going to see a big push to the downside. And that's exactly what happened on Friday. We broke through that and then boom, boom, boom. We just had a big, big push to the downside. We've now come down and hit the $63 a barrel which I've mentioned a few times on Sniper Sundays. Now, if we can eventually manage to break that, then there is huge downside momentum for oil. Um, huge potential to move down to the downside. As you can see here, that is actually at support. We are actually at now trend line support as well. So I do expect a bit of a pullback from this commodity first. We might pull back up to the upside, retest a bit of resistance. Um, before rolling over to the downside, if we do, but should we actually break down, then we could see this pair come down to $60 a barrel and then even lower, which I'll keep you updated on. So keep an eye on oil. You may see a pullback on this commodity 
um, this week. Um, if we see a bit of a pullback and then start seeing some weakness, then I will be looking at um, adding more short trades myself. So we could come back up to sort of these levels, any of these three levels here, um, 63.80, 64.20 or 64.50 area. Um, and we could be possibly on for another short trade. But be careful because this commodity moves very, very fast. And um, if this is just a pullback and a retracement, then we may be on for a bigger move higher to create new highs above $66. So keep an eye on that. Um, new Zealand dollar. Uh, I'll just go over this because this was again another pair that I traded last week. And um, we had a break off the very, very important 0.6700 level. We had this big break of the, of the daily ascending trend line. We had that break, retest here. So you can see the break of the trend line, the retest came down, broke through monthly support, and then kept pushing back down. So I had this support level here. You can see the last support where we had a big, big, big pullback from here when we tested this level at 0.6590. So I had this um, I had this in mind when I was watching this pair after its big push down from up here, uh, which was a couple of hundred pips of a, uh, of a drop. So I was keeping an eye on this last week on Thursday. I think I took this trade on Thursday. And you can see just here off support, we've got a doji candle, a bullish engulfing sort of um, hammer here, another doji, another push down to the downside. This was all on Friday morning. Then we had another four hour um, sort of bearish, uh, bullish engulfing, but also a hammer. So the price action there was beautiful and just very, very easy to read. And from there was a nice short, a long trade and up to about where we were, I think it was about another 100 pips and to the upside made on Friday. Now I was looking at hopefully coming up to 0 0.6700, we've again seen another bit of an evening star um, formation on the 4 hour but this is just as the market was closing. So I'm not too worried about this, I have taken most uh, a, a large portion of my profit off the table here um, because this is obviously overall a bearish market at the moment but I was expecting this pullback and I do think that we might be able to come back up and test 0 0.6700 so I'm going to look out for a retest of that and then I'll be watching this uh, this pair next week, similar to NZ, uh, sorry, similar to Aussie AUD USD. I do think that we will need to then see a break out of this sort of region here, 0.6590 and 0.6700. This sort of uh, 100 pip range, and we need to see a break out of those in order to uh, confirm the next move. If we just go back to Aussie, these two these two commodities have, uh, move very similar. Um, so you can see here that sort of range that I highlighted on Aussie US dollar something that I will be waiting to see on the New Zealand dollar to actually break out of as well even though it's a little bit larger um, once we get to sort of this level here I'll be watching if we get to 0.6700 I'll be waiting to see a break above or a break below to take the next trade on this pair now, um, yeah, so that was 100 pips on that, 400 pips on oil, a um, couple of hundred pips on Aussie US dollar, 200 pips on USD CAD, and um, yeah, about 100 pips on the Euro US dollar. Um, I also had another trade on gold, um, which I also ran over on my Instagram live. I ex explained to people that we would see a pullback to sort of this level here. Um, explained that I would get a pullback to the not point sorry the 1 to 74 to 72 sort of level we had a pullback last week uh, on Friday and then we had a big push up to the upside so that was uh, I think that completed the thousand or just over the thousand pip mark for the week now I just got want to run over USD JPY because I know this is a, a, a favorite for many people and we yeah I just want to run over what's happened on on this pair um, so basically Last week I stressed the importance of staying away from this pair until it was clear what was happening. Um, there's no point, you can see we just had, I just ran over six other pairs which were um, gave loads and loads of pips which again just reinstates what I was saying last week. Stay away from pairs that are really not doing anything, that they're consolidating like this. Don't place an order to sell or buy while it's still in a consolidating zone because you don't know how long you're going to get stuck in there you don't know what it's going to do. You're sort of just gambling um, because this could have gone in, in any direction. Now, again, it's been another week and not a lot has really happened on this pair if you've held the position. 
and you're basically really not far off where you where you started off. So what you can see here is um, we had this we had this one two third touch of the trend line. Now I posted up on this on my Instagram um, because I did expect to push up to the upside. The last couple of weeks I said I did expect another push up above this weekly resistance of one point uh, sorry one one two point zero zero and to basically create a new high above this resistance over here. I'll just take that off for a minute to keep things clear. But I was expecting one push above or to hit some levels above this before I was looking at taking a short. And that is basically exactly what happened. Um, now we didn't hit exactly to the level that I said. I was 10 pips away. Um, can't get pit perfect every time, but it was, it was very, very close. Um, and yeah, I expected, overall what I was basically expecting was a push up to the upside before a, a move down. So I do think that USD JPY could move down next week and, and actually come lower, but it wasn't gonna just happen easily. So um, yeah, this was the where I was targeting up here, 11250. Um, so I will admit I was only 10 pips away from that. But then what you can see here is, this is what I talk about manipulation in the market. Um, a few people on some other videos commented and said, can you explain about manipulation? So here you've got the consolidation zone. Um, you don't know which way the market's gonna go. What's happened here is we've had a big push up to the upside. So everybody who was waiting has said, right, USD JPY is going long. I'm going to take a long trade. So they've all taken a long trade here while this one hour candle was very, very bullish. And then all of a sudden, within an hour, a couple of hours, we'll pull back below into the consolidation zone and, and you're basically at a loss or running in, or the price is coming down towards your stop loss. Um, then what's happened here is we pushed down here. And then everyone's got trigger happy again and took a short trade because now they think that this was a fake out. They come down here and that now everybody, when they seen a big red candle dropping below the, the consolidation zone, like this on the one hour, everybody's jumped in a short trade and prices again reverse back up. So price is just grabbing people here, just grabbing uh, long sellers, tricking them in, hitting stop losses. This is a stop hunt as well for anyone that was looking to take a short and so on. And it's come down and done the same thing down here on the lower side of the market. So it's basically just taking people's money here. Um, faking a long, faking a short, faking to push, uh, pushing back up again so people start taking longs. Um, but we've had this huge rejection off the trend line. So what, basically, now take away this consolidation zone. What can we see? Let's look at price action. You can see we've broken this trend line, what, um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. We've broken that, at, broken that now. And we have come back, had that retest, retested 112.00. And I do think that we can come lower on this pair next week. So if we can break lower than this level here, if we break this level, then I am looking at this pair coming down to 11080 uh, or 80, 85, and then coming back down to 110. So that's what I'm looking out for next week. Obviously, if we fail to break this level and we push back up, we can break above the, the weekly resistance of 112, then I will revert back to my original uh, my original target. Sorry, it wasn't that fib. Let me just move this off for a second. I will be I will be looking at coming back up to the 11250 level that I said. which was just here, 11250. So I do have that still in mind, but if we can break below the 11135 level, which is here, we can break below that, then I do see this pair coming down long, uh, coming down a lot lower, coming down to this monthly support level of 110. So that covers a lot of basically what I spoke about last week. Um, looking ahead for the news, which is quite important, um, I was just looking through this earlier. Let's just go back to, to Monday, what tomorrow, nothing really happening. Um, no news releases or ec economic data coming out. Tuesday, nothing really major. Some GDP from the um, Canadian dollar um, we need to watch out for. Um, and then there is some New Zealand dollar news coming out at 11.45. Big news, which is unemployment rate and employment change. So be careful around NZD. Just looking back on the chart now, I said within this level, I wouldn't really take any trades on NZD until the news comes out and then we might get a bit more of a direction or a bias on where the market's going. 
Now, what have we got? Wednesday, obviously this week is uh, the biggest news release is coming out this week, which I'll come to in a minute. Wednesday, um, FOMC meetings for the US dollar. Always, always very manipulative. Um, be very, very careful trading around the 7 o'clock time or the lead up to it. Because, um, yeah, news can come out. This can change the market big time. Market can go in either direction. So, um, yeah, be very, very careful trading around this time and just be very mindful that the FOMC meeting is coming up on Wednesday. Um, then what have we got? Thursday, lot of English news, uh, which is the Great British Pound. So be careful with the pound on Thursday, as there's the official bank rate, which will be is the interest rate. There's um, the Governor uh, Carney speaks at 12.30. So there's a news release, and then half an hour later, um, the Bank of England starts speaking, which this news release can send the pound one way, and then uh, we can have the Bank of England speak, and then it can send it another. So be very careful around Thursday um, when it comes to the news for the Great British Pound. And then Friday, we have the, of course, the main, the biggest uh, data release for um, the US dollar, which is the non-farm payroll, which is the first Friday of every month. And that's what we're having on Friday. So normally, I don't actually even trade on this day because this is very, very, very manipulative, manipulative and price can have major spikes to the upside, spikes to the downside, and just basically toy around with anyone in the market or toy around with anyone who even attempts to trade that time. I'm not saying that you can't trade it and you don't make money trade at that time, but trading is all about um, risk management. It's all about preserving your capital. When We're here to um, make steady income every day and not risk our not risk our capital but trading around times uh, of the non-farm payroll is very risky it's like gambling because you do not know you cannot predict what's going to happen so obviously when i have trades on um, i'm a swing trader i have trades on for a week or two weeks if i have a position in, in any pair that the us dollar affects i'll hopefully by that time i've taken some profit um, and and I will have my stop losses always moved to break even. So should the market move against me, I'm out of the market. I don't lose a penny, and my risk is always always covered. So please take that on board. Please apply that to your trading and use that. But um, yeah, so quite a bit of news coming out once again this week, um, which will affect it. So that um, non-farm payroll on Friday, and the and the FOMC meeting on Wednesday will be a big mover for the euro US dollar um, pair. So I will be watching out all this week to see what the moves will be on the US dollar and see if we can capitalize. And I'll also be watching the US dollar index to see how the news affects this index and whether this becomes a fake out of this sort of range and we pull back in below or whether we can actually, this actually keeps pushing and the, and the US dollar can gain even more strength, which will then obviously push down all the US dollar crosses. So I think that's um, quite a lot we covered today. Uh, gone over last week, covered the basically a thousand pip week. Let's hope we can have another one. Um, I'll catch up with you next Sunday. Have a great week. Have a great trading week. Um, I hope it all goes well and I'll catch up with you next week. Um, the only other thing is I've mentioned my Instagram quite a few times. Anyone that watches this that doesn't actually follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is simply bd underscore fx. I post up a lot of stuff on my story on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I give out a lot of tips and just show my trades on on day-to-day. -day. So yeah, go and follow that and um, I'll catch up with everyone next week. Thank you.